Good morning, how are we doing today? It's a beautiful, relatively sunny day in Fenerman. I have missed the sunshine, something I am super pleased about. So today then, right, what we're gonna do, uh, I've got some chores to do. We're gonna open up the door, get this place blown out, and then we are gonna have a chat about birch ply, Baltic birch, whatever you guys call it in the States. And, uh, and yeah, what it is, different types, different grades, and it's gonna be awesome. Hope you enjoy it, stick around. Oh, and remember, you give us a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that sort of rubbish, that would be perfect. Let's get into it. Right, so we'll get into this then, shall we? So, so full disclosure then, so if I'm being honest, this isn't something that I've necessarily come up against. Um, we buy quite a large amount of birch ply, and uh, I'll show you my rack that we've got. We do a huge amount of like template cutting, we uh, order the sheets in, we do, so we'll cut like a thousand units for a client, or we build like birch ply furniture, and um, so we do a fair amount of work with it and I've never had the issue where I've come up against having, it, having to call it Baltic birch or Russian birch and all this sort of stuff and I never really fully understood and I'd have a conversation with a few guys on Facebook and that about the difference and so what I did was I had a quick Google and, uh, and yeah, the stuff that you guys are referring to as, um, as birch ply and then you have your Baltic birch ply the stuff I would, you guys are referring to as birch pie is not what I would call birch pie, not proper birch pie. So proper birch plywood, right, is made from birch logs, obviously. What they do is they cut the birch trees down, they cut it into uh, specific log sizes, they'll steam it, heat it, which makes it easier to debark it and, um, and, yeah, and peel it. The logs are then cut to a specific size. It goes through like the peeler machine uh, where they slice the veneers off and then what they're going to do is they're going to stick them at 90 degrees to each other um, laminate them together with glue, press them, steam them, do whatever it is that they do with it, I think they just press it together um, and then uh, they cut them to size, sand them and they fill any knots or gaps right uh, with stamps and stuff like that which I'll show you. You get different grades of plywood so they range, or birch plywood, so they range from like B or S plus and I think there's an E maybe, I've not seen it and they go all the way down to like CC. So for us, for furniture grade, we would always specify an S plus, or, uh, which is usually the external, I think. The S plus or the B face, and then the BB face. So the BB face is gonna have stamps in it. But the way, we, the way that we work it is obviously the BB face will be on the inside. So the other thing to remember is that you can get um, small streaks and uh, discoloration, pinhole knots, that sort of thing. Um, but it's all part, it's like you're working with timber, right? So you're gonna have certain um, imperfections in it, but the imperfections are what give it character and the character is what makes it uh, uh, unique or bespoke for that specific client. So good quality birch plywood is gonna have um, solid core veneers inside. So each one of those layers is gonna be a solid core um, and you're not gonna have massive glue spots in there like you would do with like cheaper pine or shuttering plywood, the softwood plywood. Um, yeah, that can that can screw an entire project up when you're uh, when you're working with that. So the thing to remember is the solid core, the veneers in them, they're going to be around about 1.3 mil thick, which is about 16th of an inch, and they're going to be uniform all the way through. Right. Okay. So sizes. As a general rule, you, what you're going to buy is you're going to buy sheets that are five by five, so 15, 25 by 15, 25 millimeters, or they're going to be eight by four, which is uh, 2440 millimeters by 1220 millimeters. As a general rule, this isn't hard and fast, but as a general starting rule for you, if it's five foot by five foot, it's internal grade, right? If it's eight foot by four foot, it's external grade. Just because it's eight foot by four foot doesn't mean it's not proper birch ply, and we'll get onto that in a second. 
it can still be proper birch or Russian birch, Baltic birch, whatever you want to call it, but um, <clears throat> if it's eight by four, as a general rule, it's going to be external grade, which is going to have a different type of glue in it. And you can see here from the internal type, there's no specific glue line in between those layers. Um, it's just a nice, smooth continuation as you go through. Whereas with the external grade, you can see those dark marks in it, those dark lines. Those are when you know that it's external grade birch. So if you don't know, let's have a look and see what a 5x5 five five sheet looks like compared to an 8x4 sheet. I keep saying it, but as a general rule, 5x5 five five is internal, 8x4 is external. And you can get Russian and Baltic, however you want to call it, proper birch plywood in 8x4 sheets, but the chances are it's going to be external grain. You can have a bit of a, a different glue line. Personally, I prefer the external stuff. I think it gives it more of a pop when we're making birch ply furniture on the edge grain, but that's just me. So from what I've gathered on Facebook and Instagram, chatting to guys in the States, uh, in the YouTube comments and stuff like that, there seems to be a difference. You guys are getting sold birch ply, and it's not really birch ply, what I would call birch ply in the true sense of the word. So birch ply to me is um, birch plywood with solid core veneers and birch all the way through it. I feel what you're getting sold is birched faced plywood. So it's birch faced, pl birch -faced plywood with a pine core from what I can see. So I went and had a look at Lowe's uh, online and I typed in birch pine and they do two types. They had a four foot by two foot piece that was birch plywood, that was like your Baltic birch. And then what they had was they had a, uh, I think it was an eight before sheet and it was, it was called birch ply half inch. But what it was, was it was um, birch faced pine core plywood. So it had a birch face veneer, which is the really, really, really thin veneer on the top of it, with a pine core in the center, and then a birch face on the bottom. That's cheeky, if I'm being honest with you. That's not what I would call birch firewood, but that's me over here. So the easiest way to check, right, is to have a look at the veneers, uh, or the cores on the plywood. If you've got an 18 mil piece of plywood, and there's like 11 veneers in there, then, um, and they're all uniform thickness, then you can pretty much guarantee that it's gonna be proper birch. If you look at it and there's maybe like five or seven, then that's not going to be proper birch. Oh, and the face veneer wants to, really wants to be the same thickness, near enough the same thickness as all of the other internal thicknesses. As a rule of thumb, if it's lightweight or has really thick cores in it, so like I said, like five or seven of them, it's not gonna be birch ply. If it's real heavy weight, you know, a lot of heft in there, then that's gonna be proper birch plywood. Don't always trust the description. So then, what are the issues with this? Well, you know, if you wanna build a birch ply cabinet, you want something that's gonna be real hefty, real solid, and um, you're not gonna get that because you've gone effectively from using a hardwood to a softwood, which is which just isn't gonna be the same. Um, your screws and fixings aren't gonna have pulled into it enough um, like you would do with birch ply. It's not gonna be enough bite in there. When you put your glue on, your glue's only gonna be adhering to that real thin, um, face veneer, which is not what you want, whereas on the uh, birch ply you've got a nice thick veneer and like it's like micron thick on that one that I looked at on Lowe's. Birch plywood, proper birch plywood is a real beautiful thing to work with. I know it's plywood and some people find it a little bit funny, but I think in terms of like a construction material, there's a lot of people who are really enjoying working with MDF at the moment and um, I would say birch plies like MDF 
obviously more expensive, but a lot nicer to uh, a lot nicer to use and a lot nicer to work with. I genuinely really enjoy it. So what's it like to work with Birch Pine? Birch Pine, like I said, like I've been saying, is awesome. It's really, really nice material. It's not cheap, but it's great to work with. There's a couple of things you do need to remember with, right? In terms of your blade when you're cutting it, um, so there's a couple of options you can do. Uh, obviously you're working with plywood, so as you slice through it, you, there's a possibility of tear out or chip out, uh, which is not something you want when you're making piece of furniture. Um, so there's a few options. There's obviously the uh, cut method, the pre-cut method, where you score where you're going to be cutting, which works. Um, it's a bit time consuming. There's the tape method, which again is time consuming, but it does work for the vast majority of the time. The final method, which is what we do, is we have a um, real good quality blade you need. What you need is you want um, a high tooth count and a specific type of grind. Now you can go for like a 60 or a 64, and you're going to get, and you want it to get like an ATB, which is an alternate top bevel, I think so, um, grind. Which, is, which will work. It's not perfect, but it's gonna work. Now, you're gonna to have to do a couple other things with it. Um, you, you know, ideally, you want a zero clearance insert for your table saw, and if you're cross-cutting, uh, you wanna use a table saw sled. Um, I know some people think they're real dangerous, but the tools are really dangerous if you play around with them, right? So yes, yeah, so you can get yourself a, a 60 tooth um, ATB blade. You, will, you can also find like an um, 80 teeth uh, TCG, triple chip grind blades I think they're called um, and again they work really well the the issue that I've found in the past when working with a triple chip grind the TCG blade is that uh, because there's so many teeth when you're cutting something like 18 mil birch the motor really has to be fairly powerful to push all those teeth through the, the timber to cut it without um, stalling or without burning the timber because it's not going fast enough like the, you're not the feed rate isn't fast enough for the 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 saw blade that you're using if that makes sense. So we tend to stick with maybe like a 60 or a 64 tooth um, ATB and then we just sharpen them once a month. I've got three blades, we send them out to the sharpener, They like two blades go out at a time um, and then they come back and they're super sharp. And I think uh, we maybe get like 12 or 13 sharpens out of a single blade so it's not bad. Okay so the blades that we use, they come from a company called um, Axminster. They're Axcalibur blades from Axminster. Um, we use the premium range, premium range are really, really good. Um, there are lots of other blade companies out there, we've tried a couple, not really had um, as consistent results as uh, the Axcalibur premium blades. Um, and for us, consistency is the key, right? If we consistently know how a board's gonna turn out, we can understand how that's gonna work for us in terms of project, uh, making money, and the time it's gonna take. It, obviously, the, when you're building something, your finishing time generally is can take as much as, if not longer, than the construction time for the cabinet or whatever it is you're doing. So cutting down on finishing time for us is a huge one. Okay, so another thing to remember is uh, stains. When you're trying to stain or finish your timber, there's a couple of things you need to be aware of. Um, as a rule, general rule of thumb, water-based stains work best. Um, gel stains are pretty good. Oil Oil-based are uh, not great, if I'm honest. And I know that's a, you guys in the States, you love your oil-based stuff. It's not something that's really pushed over here, especially with uh, the European regulations and stuff like that. There's a huge push to go to water-based stuff. And if I'm honest, in terms of birch ply, the water-based is the better option. For our water-based stains, we use stains, we use a company called Fiddies. Fiddies do some really, really good stuff. And for our oil-based work, um, we use a company called Treetex, who you might have heard me talk about before. They're amazing, you should definitely go check them out. Okay, in terms of like clear coating, there's a few options. Obviously, normally you've got your normal based, um, oil based polyurethane, your water based polyurethane, and like a wax or a hard wax oil, something like Treetex. Or I know some people, some people use Osmo. Um, I prefer Treetex, but yeah. So these, those are the three. Or you, or you can use lacquer, right? Spray lacquer. Because it, the timber's so white. When you're finishing it, you want to use, um, if you want to try and use a water-based finish, like a water-based poly, or you can go for an oil-based finish if it has like a whitening pigment in it. So the Treetex hard wax oil, they do a natural one that we use that has a white pigment in it. Um, and that helps to keep the whiter uh, finish on the birch plywood, which is perfect. And the last thing to remember is when you're using filler, when you look for filler, you want to try for something that's got a natural finish and not a coloured finish. Um, I'm not going to tell you which filler we use because it took me forever to find it, but 
Um, yeah, you want to look for a natural finish filler, and it's got to be stainable and sandable if you're going to be staining the product at the end, okay? Right then, so we'll wrap this one up. So just remember those key points that we talked about. So if it's five foot by five foot, it's internal grade. If it's eight foot by four foot, it's external grade, general rule of thumb. Um, if uh, you want to be checking the cores, if they're like 16th of an inch, 1.3 mil thick, and you've got maybe 11 of them on an 18 mil, uh, 11, 13, something like that, you've got proper birch plywood. If you've got like five really thick cores and so teeny, weeny, weeny hair thin face veneer, um, then that's not proper birch ply and you want to avoid that if that's what you're after. Uh, if you're staining it, you want to use some water-based or gel-based stains and if you're finishing it, try and you, and you want to keep that white colour, then you probably want to use a water-based finish or an oil-based finish with a white pigment in it. Cool, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that uh, helped a bunch of you and um, you'll have an awesome day and we'll catch you next time. Hey, if there's anything you want me to talk about, anything you want info on, uh, if you want me to review, check out, look at, Whack it down in the comments. If you could give us a like, subscribe, really helps me out, lets you know that we're doing right, and um, you'll have an awesome day, and I'll catch you next time, okay? Check out that blue sky, man. That is a thing of beauty. I can't believe it's double figures today. God, long way this continue. I feel like uh, I can get home, do some gardening, I might even get the barbecue out, eh? Perfect. <laughs>